23 seconds late. There it is. We're live, everybody. We're 23 seconds late. That was my fault. I lost the questions right before 30 seconds. Welcome to Master Spas Live. Let's get some feedback. Sound check. How's everybody doing? One person. Who's going to give the sound check? Kayla or mom? <laughs> you know it's going to be one of those two. Who is it? Maybe Susan? Maybe Mike? Hmm. Jessica Sweeney. Sounds good. You beat my mom. All right. Very good. All right, everybody. Master Spa sound is good. Let's go. Let's pile up some more bodies on here. Mary's here. I'll show you where she is in a second. She's here. It's not going to be as dramatic as the, you know, amazing view. We're back in our dungeon here. Sound is good. Sound is good. Spanky, what's up, brother? Richard Markovich, what's up, my man? Martin, Pete, everybody, how we doing, everybody? Keep piling on. We got 25 people. We'll go another minute. Today's topic, not my favorite. It's sort of boring. <laughs> Can I say boring? I'm going to show you where Mary is. So hang on a second. She's right there doing nothing. She's sitting well, down in the chair. Hearing mostly from Ben anyway today. Not that that's entirely unusual, but. <laughs> Are you saying I talk a lot or what? I'm not sure what she's saying there. Let's hop but in. We got this 30. topic is not my forte. Not your so. forte. <laughs> Today we're talking about chemicals. Everybody's favorite topic of chemicals. And then I've broken it down into two ways to do it. Filling my new trainer 19 as we speak. Awesome. awesome. Now that's fun. That's fun to think about and talk about. Mary deserves some time to relax. She does. She's a very, very hard worker. My brother, perfect timing. Uncle Scotty. Elizabeth, yeah, she's chilling out. She's ready for Ben's chemistry chips. All right. I'm not a chemist, so we're going to... I, should I do a disclaimer? I think you should. There has to be a disclaimer. There's a disclaimer. I'm not a chemist. There. And I'm going to break this down on how I do it, and we're actually going to have some fun with this. I'm going to make something that's painful and boring and problematic sort of interesting. Okay? If anyone can do that, you I can. Yeah. I actually have a plan. I didn't even share my plan with you, but I've got, I've got a plan to have, how to make chemistry fun. So we got 52 people. I'm going to start. All right, my brother, I'm here for the chemistry. <laughs> uh, yay, our Challenger 15D is currently cloudy. I did get pH, chlorine, and hardness in perfect range. You didn't mention alkalinity. All right. So I have got a tip for you. Can I trade my above ground pool for a spa? Uh, you're definitely asking in the wrong place for that. Uh, I'm here from New Mexico. Wasn't there a question from New Mexico? NM is New yeah. Mexico. Yep. We've got all the questions right now. Anyway, okay, so this is what's going to happen. There's two ways to do water chemistry. There's the official chemist way, and then there's the simple my way, which doesn't work for everybody. It works for me, though. But here's the thing. We're actually going to test if what I do works. We're gonna, I never use test strips, and we're actually gonna go to, to our swim spa, and we're gonna test it live and see where I'm at, how close I am on, on where it's supposed to be on alkalinity, pH, and uh, chlorine. Now, keep in mind on the chlorine levels, I would expect them to be low because of the EcoPure. That's normal, okay? We'll get into that. All right, uh, Kathy, how do I win one? I don't know what to tell you on that. What's up from Philly? I'm so bad at chemistry. All right, Chris, we got you, all right? So, first I'm gonna go the official way and, and I'm gonna break this down. So let's say you go out there and you're cloudy. Okay, so, so throw a test strip in and then you see your alkalinity is low, your pH is low. Typically, typically, alkalinity and pH will both go low together. They don't have to though, okay? So how you start doing things, you don't worry about the chlorine until the alkalinity and pH are in place, okay? Um, hold up with the questions for now because I'm gonna explain this and I can't get to the questions. So, and if they pass up, I won't see them. So if you asked a question, I want you to actually ask it again. Uh, and I also want everyone to say where you're at when you get a chance, okay? So we'll, we'll go to questions afterwards but the phone actually scrolls them up and then I can't refer back to them. So I'm not gonna stop to answer questions in this. I'm gonna explain this. So basic chemicals. Now keep in mind, I'm not a chemist and, I'm, and I, I don't work in a pool store. I'm not, you know, God with this stuff, but I have a pretty good grip on it. 
So how I remember to deal with alkalinity before pH, which is you deal with before chlorine or bromine, whatever you're using, A is comes before P. That's it, that's the trick. Alkalinity first, you have to adjust that. What happens most of the time when you adjust alkalinity, it will, pH will go, let's say your alkalinity was low, it will actually go up. So now there is, uh, where is it? pH up, pH down, alkalinity up. So there's someone always ask, there's no alkalinity down in my startup kit. What do you use? You use the pH down. Does It, it works both of them, okay? Uh, there is a little trick with baking soda. Probably unnecessary if you're using the pH down. So first thing we're gonna start with A. Alphabet starts with A. That's how we're gonna remember alkalinity. I'm gonna make this not so chemically, chemistry-ish so that normal people can remember it. A first, alkalinity. So you're gonna adjust that up, and if it needs to come down, you're gonna use pH down. We'll do pH and alkalinity, and most of the time, the pH and alkalinity mirror each other. So, when the alkalinity is where it's supposed to be, then if the pH isn't, then you're gonna address the pH up or down at the same time. Once those are in the ideal range, which your test strip has the little colors, and we're gonna, we're gonna actually test ours. I'll, sh I'll share with you how I do it, which if any of you have watched these before, you know how I do it. I do it a little differently. A, alkalinity, adjust that first, get that dialed in. P, pH, dial that in, okay? And then they're gonna, they're gonna lock in place. Then you do the chlorine, okay? The chlorine will just get eaten up if the, the alkalinity and the pH aren't steady in the middle where they're supposed to be, okay? So there's no real sense in crushing it with chlorine when it's cloudy if your alkalinity and pH are way off because it's not going to work quickly at all, all right? Now, so alkalinity, pH are adjusted, add the chlorine. Keep in mind the EcoPure's job is to get rid of excess chlorine. But typically what happens, like there's lots of questions on foam, there's lots of questions on cloudiness. Most of that stuff is caused by alkalinity and pH. Now, I have to say this, the biggest thing that yep. you need to do to take care of your hot tub or swim spa water, that's right, if, you, if, you're, if you've ever heard me say this before, don't let anybody pee in it, okay? Don't let anyone pee in it. Put a sign up on the wall, no peeing in the pool, no peeing in the hot tub, do it, okay? That's the first thing. And it's not that it can't be dealt with, it's just that it's more concentrated than human sweat. Human urine and human sweat are actually very similar in breakdown, so it all has to be dealt with. Alkalinity adjust pH adjust then chlorine and then you need to run filter cycles and then you can give it a day you know then it'll clear up that water will start to clear up once that chlorine is allowed to do its job next thing you want to do hit it about once a week with shock now there's two kinds of shock non chlorine and chlorine now I don't use either but I, I think I'm going to I'm actually going to add that into my repertoire here of things that I do right now I just use chlorine we'll get back to that Alkalinity, pH, when it needs to be adjusted, those won't need adjustment very often unless someone's peeing in your swim spa all the time. And then chlorine, and then it should lock in place, and then you're just using little bits of chlorine every time someone gets out. I like that blood sugar method. Every time someone gets out, put a little bit of, of sanitizer in there, and it grabs onto whatever we've left behind. I always ex explain it that way. Chlorine is like a broom. We're sweeping up after ourselves after we get out, so you're not soaking in it, okay? Then the shock, you can do that once a week. The main difference, I like when the air conditioning shuts off, the main difference between the, the chlorine and the non-chlorine is that the non-chlorine, if you were to hit it with shock, you could get in there a little faster, but I don't do anything before I get in. I always do it after I get out. So it's not a factor for me, so I would go with a chlorinated shock for me personally. If you're kind of flying by the seat of your pants and you tend to, oh, I forgot to do anything, so let me hit it, but we're trying to get in there at the same time, well then, then that might be a better option for you, okay? So, <clears throat> now let's talk about how I do it. And then we'll, we've got questions here and we're gonna talk about that specifically. What I do is, if I, if I had, I don't even have shock. Um, I, I had to find my test strips because I don't even use those, okay? And, and the big mystery is how our water's gonna turn out when we test it today on the fine things like the alkalinity and pH. I'm betting you that it's pretty good, okay? So every time we get out, I hit it. Now I've got 
For the swim spa, I, I like the four and a half pounder. Uh, it's Rendezvous, really happy with this brand, it works great. Um, I have, in my experience, had a bad batch of like the cheap stuff, I'm not gonna name names, like Walmart, Chlorine, I have had a bad batch. Okay, I didn't name names. And I was gonna say, we, you put the Chlorine when both of us are done. Right. Not, not right. in between when right. I swim. So if Mary swim. swims first, I swim second. When we're both done, I literally go like this. Can you see that? That's it. Would you say it's like two tablespoons? I would say that's probably a tablespoon and a half. And I'll dump that in whenever we're done. We both swam in there. Our water is about 87 degrees. We swim on the warmer side. Um, because we don't like the cold and it's not going to change. You can call us sissies. I don't care. So that's how we do it. And every time we get out, I put that in and that's it. Okay. So very spanky, very precise measurements. Yeah, yeah very precise. So I, that's all I do. Literally every time we get out, I put a little bit of chlorine. I take the broom and sweep up after us. And then once a month ish, take the filters out and we clean them. We're going to show you how to take the filters out. Um, if, and it doesn't really happen. If we go away and uh, we forgot to you know, tune up the, uh, the filtration and maybe didn't clean the filters beforehand and we get back and the water's a little cloudy, um, it'd probably be faster to take the test strips and see what's going on and see if your alkalinity and pH are low and then hit it with some chlorine. I usually just tag it with chlorine. If I had shock, I'd shock it too and you're done, all right? You can make this as complicated as you want. So these are the two methods. So I don't take any time thinking about it. I always put small amounts in there and I've, I've got a good, you know, way yeah. to make you understand this or you can go like super hardcore test it every day I'm not doing that all right I don't have time for that I'm not doing that we don't have time um, that's it that's all there is to it so there's two kinds of people the people that balance their checkbooks like painfully painstakingly go through and balance every single thing out make sure that to the nickel burp, 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 burp. it's it's always ideal 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 and then there's the people who just look at their, their online checking and say, those, those are all the things that are supposed to come out. That's normal, I'm not balancing anything, I'm not taking the time, I'm that guy. I don't balance anything, but I know if something comes out because I'm watching it. I watch the water, but I'm not painstakingly measuring everything, I'm not doing that. Just like, I, same with my checkbook. So there's, there's people who balance the checkbook painfully every month, people who just monitor it, make sure that the charges are where they're supposed to be, that's me. All right, that works for me. You can't mix the two or you'll mess everything up. If you're a checkbook balancer and you start you know, willy-nilling it like I do, it's, it's not gonna work. You either one or the other, you can't mix two. I have so many customers who are watching these videos, I have to check this, I have to check this, but Ben said to add this and da 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 You can't mix the two. You're either measuring and doing it exactly or you're doing it like I do it. There's no mixing, all right? And this is my take, I'm not a chemist. You disagree? Look at my water and we'll see, we'll see who disagrees because anyone who's gonna disagree with me probably has cloudy water, but this kid doesn't. So we'll get there. Now, I am gonna start playing with this more and, uh, and did some, you know, I went through and made sure that the information I had was accurate. So I went through and, and if their water is a little cloudy, if we go on a trip or something to get back, I'm gonna test it because I wanna know what's going on in there rather than just tagging it with chlorine. My method works. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pay a little attention to it for fun, for professional information, call it that. So, now, the other thing, I'm gonna flip this around. Do, 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 do. So that's my water, all right? So now in that water, I can see the bottom. It's running a little filter cycle. I can see everything is clear, the details there. I'm feeling the side, everybody listen. Okay, that's where squeaky clean came from. Do, 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 do. Water's clean and clear. I can see the detail of the soft tread on the bottom and there's no junk on the side. Now I've used no test strips whatsoever. Okay, I've used absolutely no test strips. So how was I able to achieve that with my precise measurements? Little bit of chlorine, use it as a broom. You don't need a lot if you do it frequently. The, the blood sugar, your water has a blue tint to it. Just the video, there's nothing. It's just city water. It's been in there for, I don't know, four or five months. Yeah. So, looks good. So we're gonna test that in a minute and we're gonna check it. Now, 
One thing I left out on the test strips. Now, my test strips, these are the, apparently the ones that came with the startup kit. <laughs> I don't use them. Uh, that's how many we have in there because I've never used them. All right. So on and here. And there is a startup kit that comes with. Yes, all new spas, uh, swim spas come with a startup kit. So now, the other thing that's not on here that I, that I do suggest is keeping an eye on your calcium hardness. So you've got alkalinity, pH, calcium hardness. Then your sanitizer is your chlorine or bromine, and then your oxidizer is shock, whether it's non-chlorine or chlorine, okay? So your calcium hardness, if your water is not hard enough, then it can degrade things, okay? It can degrade your, your parts and make it look like there was like actually salt in there, okay? It can cause, you know, funny things enough? if it's not hard enough. Huh. Yeah, so typically it's calcium hardness increaser that you purchase, and that's, that's where you'll, you know, take care of that. So there is a test strip available that has all five. So you've got free chlorine. Uh, I don't do bromine, so I don't have the bromine test strips. Alkalinity, pH, and, oh, this has calcium hardness. Okay, it doesn't have the bromine. So this is, this is perfect. So there you go. That shows you how much I use it. I don't even know what was on there. What if you do have hard water that you're putting in? So you actually, so if you look on the scale of hardness, you want your water pretty much in the middle to a touch over on the harder side than softer, okay? And uh, that's the easiest way to do that, but it is important. And actually the calcium being messed up will affect your quality of your water and, and how it looks. It can, I've, I have experienced that years ago when I had my, my very first hot tub. Okay, so um, although I'm not really known for using test strips, as you can see, I think we should test this. We ready? Yeah. You want to hold the camera? Sure. So the question is, does Ben's willy-nilly method of chlorination and cleaning and sanitizing actually balance everything on here? Because I assure you, I don't even, I'm going to show you, you're going you're gonna to laugh at me. This is my little setup here. We brought our little red cart over with our questions and a bottle of water in case I get thirsty and I can wipe my hands off if we get wet. So here's the test strips. I've got those. I've got chlorine. I've got, what is this, pH up. Uh, the pH down spilled when it was being shipped here and I never replaced it because I've never used it. Protect Plus. And this is a mineral remover upon fill up, and I do recommend using that. Um, if you've got city water, not such a big deal. If you have well water, definitely use it, okay? Foam out is not even opened. It shouldn't be opened, because if you have foam in there, it's either as a result of the pH and alkalinity being messed up and, and not hitting it, or you're adding contaminants to the water. This is a temporary fix and doesn't, you know, it, it treats the symptom rather than the cause. Enzyme clear, never opened it. And then spa clarifier, uh, we used that after the last time we refilled it, the water got pretty cloudy on a trip and I left the, the filtration turned all the way down. So we used that and it worked pretty well, but then you have to clean the filters and get that junk out of there. Okay, so let's go. We're walking up the stairs. Mara, I'm gonna let you hold this. Don't you dare drop my phone in the pool. I will not. So the question is, question is, so I'm going to have you hold it like right there. Okay, don't shake it. You make everyone throw up. Mix it in there. All right. So let's check calcium hardness. I'm going to just lift this so you can see that. There we go. I'm going to call that ideal. pH. I'm going to call that ideal. Right in the middle, see it? Then we're gonna go with alkalinity. Oh, guess what? It's ideal. And then as I thought, the chlorine is gonna be on the low side, which I'm okay with. The EcoPure is doing its job of getting rid of excess chlorine. So you saw it here. Someone who doesn't pay attention to these strips somehow has perfect water. And it looks perfect, okay? We'll go back to the little station. How do you like our little setup? couple of nerds. Well, one anyway. All right, let's turn this around. All right, so 
Ben's willy-nilly method works, proven. We just proved it. I don't even have calcium increaser. Now some of that is gonna be luck. This is city water here, and apparently it's pretty good. Although that's not new water. That's been in right. there, that's been in there quite a while. We have our filtration, so I want to talk about a few things. On initial fill-up, you want to use a mineral remover. Protect Plus is, is our go-to. It comes with our kit. Uh, it's what we recommend um, at, at you know the dealership that we're affiliated with. Works real well, okay? You want to do that. Um, the pre-filter thing. Everybody's got to use a pre-filter. So everyone gets their swim spot hot tub. I don't have a pre-filter. No one give me a pre-filter. This pre-filter is not supplied with it, okay? Your water on your house, and I'm going to be blunt with it, is your problem, okay? We are not responsible for the water that comes out of your hose. However, we are here to advise you. So, the pre-filter, if you have a well and it's, you know, yucky, dirty water, the well at my house is not great for hot tubs. I actually have a pool water company bring the water in. But if I were going to use it, I would, use a, I would run a pre-filter on the hose, which is my responsibility to buy, and then I would hit that with Protect Plus or some kind of mineral remover to get that hardness. Uh, in my house, there's iron in the water. So if you were to fill it up and then tag it with chlorine, the interaction would turn the water you know, reddish brown. Uh, green, clear water, but has a green tint is copper. That's actually one of our questions. Uh, we run into that in, I've seen that in Northern New Jersey. They had, the, I think they had copper mines there. Yeah. The water is incredibly green. It's just incredible, okay? And we tested the water and everything else. Was right yeah, and, and it, what, we were just, it was crazy. So we ended up just having to tag it with Protect Plus more than, more than even the scale on, you know, every, every product has a scale of how many gallons to use. It was more than that uh, for that particular swim spot. The water was green. It was crazy, okay? So you fill up, pre-filter. If you have city water, you, you know, I'm going to tell you just fill it. I don't, you know, when I get the water from the, the pool water place, I don't run a pre-filter, I just put it in. So that's how I do it. And then um, I'll run a little bit of Protect Plus. Home is a hot tub, here is the swim spa. So I'll run a little bit of Protect Plus and that's it. And then bring it up to temperature, hit it with some chlorine, I'm good. I don't run, I don't run anything else. I do the same thing at home with the hot tub that I do here. It's worked for years and years and years. It works well for me. Um, I don't overthink it. I don't, I don't really yeah. care. I don't really care. It's easy. You know, you make sure the water is not slimy on the edge. Water's clean and clear. You can see the details of the tub on the bottom. You're good to go. If you turn it on, a bunch of foam comes out, then you need to test it. If all of your, if all of your alkalinity, pH, calcium are in line with where they should be and chlorine, then and you get foam, then it's from an outside source. It's from bathing suits, it's from lotions, it's from all that junk. So you wanna to try to keep that stuff out of there because it's just gonna become confusing at that point. So make sure, you know, I don't shower off and make everyone shower off before getting in our stuff. And I just let everyone know you can do anything you want, just don't pee in it, okay? That's it. Uh, what pre-filter do you recommend? Never used one, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I've never used one. Right, that, that'll show you how, how important you know, it is to me. I, I realize I'm contradicting some, I you know, all the official answers. Sell them. Yeah, most, most yeah. dealerships will sell them. So you just ask whatever one they've got. Um, if I am high on alkalinity, what should I do? Okay, Joe, good question. There's two things you can do. You can either use pH down, which will lower the alkalinity, and then when you get the alkalinity down, then you may need to hit it with pH up which will raise only the pH, or you can use the baking soda trick. The baking soda trick will bring your pH down and it really won't affect the alkalinity very much at all. You have to use a ton to, for it to affect the pH. Um, what I don't know, as I'm not a chemist, I know that people do that and I know that it works. I don't know if there's a downside, so we'll need to check that answer, but I know that it works. The official thing to do is to use the pH down, which will, will lower the alkalinity as well. Okay, most of the time the two come up together, not always. <laughs> All right, wait a second. Hi from Las Vegas. You are not sissies with water temp. Ha ha ha. Do you have completely drain the pools or just, I can't, I can't see the end of that question. I'll refer back to it. I like how you, that's my kind of question right there. Yeah, I don't want to be cold, so I'm not doing it. It won't, it doesn't do it, Mary. Oh. Yes, it Every, does. Get out of here. <laughs> just sit back in your chair. Doctor, sit back in your chair. All right. Uh, now it's scrolled up. Do you have to, to keep the chemical mix right to keep the water clean? No, you do not have to drain the, the swim spa to keep it clean. 
and we have hard water with high calcium content in Vegas, good or bad. Um, as long as it's not too high, um, but your Protect Plus minerals will get anything excess out of there, and then you can just bring up the calcium by itself. All right, <laughs> wait a second. What happened if you, if you have company come over <laughs> and their child poops in your hot tub oh, or swim spa? My. You know, it's funny, I got asked that. That's the second, you, you'd be surprised, but that's the second time someone asked me that today. All right. Uh, Do you want to drain it put, at that point? I, you know, I might drain that. I think I might. Too. I might drain that. I might make them drain it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Same thing though. Get it out. Test the water. Chlorine will kill anything. So make them scoop it out. Test the water. Maybe, maybe if you want to refill it, like Caddyshack. I guess it kind of depends on. The oh. <laughs> get new friends. And if that happens, get new friends and make sure they wear a swim diaper next oh, time. Yeah, I would go with new friends. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Would you say all of your customers have to run the filter cycles twice a day? My water was cloudy until I set two filter cycles. Um, I'm hitting the see more, Mary, and it just doesn't work for me. It's this fat finger. Oh, there it goes. My water was cloudy until I set two filter cycles. The default from the factory only had one filter cycle set. The more filtration, the better. Simple as that. So we definitely run two on ours and absolutely makes a, a huge difference. The, the minimum default setting is probably not enough. Um, I like a little more than that. So yeah, I agree with that. Uh, back to being away. Should you use pod in, spool, uh, in a spa to slow release chlorine? Yeah, great idea. That's a very, very easy way to do it. Um, and, the, and the pucks, it's typically with, like, with those, if you, go to a, if you go to a pool, they use the, the hard pucks, they release slower, and it might be a better option too. Temperature all the way down, filter cycles all the way up, you know, hit it with that, and, and go, and you're fine. And often, I don't take the time to do that like I should here, and sometimes when I come back, the water's a little cloudy and I need to address it. Sometimes I do remember to do everything I'm supposed to do, and it's fine when I come back, all right? Let's see. Do, 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 do. <laughs> What's, there's a lot of questions. Chemistry. What is the difference between free chlorine and total chlorine on my test strips? I don't know. Let me look. My water's good, and I don't know the answer to that question, so free chlorine. My test strip only tests free. So I don't know the answer to that. I'll find out and we'll, we'll come back and address it. I'm gonna guess by this that free chlorine um, is the one that I'm concerned with since it's the only one on the strip. But I could be wrong on that. We'll check on that and get back with you, okay, Chris? I have been doing two filter cycles too. Two filter cycles is the way to go. Um, doo -doo -doo. <laughs> Needless to say, I don't think they will be coming back anytime soon. If they pooped in your swim spa, I would not let them back. <laughs> All right. I've got a hard, fast rule on pooping in my hot tub or swim spot. It's not allowed. All right. They need to do that. Come home to cloudy. We had gone away and came home to cloudy water. Turn the filter cycles up. On the, especially on the swim spots are totally customizable. I mean, it's all like right there. All right. My filter cycles run 2.5 hours twice a day. Uh, I run a little more than that. I think I'm running like four or five twice a day. I mean, we do have a lot of use in here, though. So we have, you know, we're swimming in there all the time. Uh, we're swimming and sweating in there. We've got uh, some other people that use it for, you know, aquatic rehab and exercise, too. So we're, we're treating a little more for more people. So we run a little extra filtration. All right. Do you have or can you provide a checklist for how you take care of your swim spa? So I, as I said before, how I take care of mine and my water, as we tested, is, is ideal. Um, literally, I run four or five hours twice a day of filtration, and that's gonna be your main pump on low, and then I run chlorine. Every time we're done and we get out, I put a tablespoon and a half, you know, something like that, maybe two tablespoons in there, and that's all I do. And then once a month, clean the filters. Or you can go, you know, the separate way, you know, and, and test everything with scent, with uh, the strips. Does water temp affect how the chemicals act? Yes, it does, good question. The higher the temperature, the more fast it's gonna burn through chlorine, it's gonna burn through everything faster. So if you were to go away, I would lower it and the water will, will be easier to take care of and will last longer at a lower temperature. So drop it to 80. If you're going away for two weeks, drop it to 80. Yeah, absolutely, good question. 
uh, let's see, I do four hours for one and two to four for the others. I adjust sometimes four hours for the second one while we we're away. Yeah, perfect. Should be fine. Uh, what else do we got? I think we're caught up. Okay, we're caught up. So who wants to hear from Mary? <laughs> I'll come stand next to you. Do you want to? I'll, yeah. I'll, okay. No, I don't. Care. I was going to swing it around for you. That's all right. You hop in here. Do I need to I'll adjust it for you? Okay. No, I'm... Is it I'm, good? Yeah. I'm a lot shorter than Ben, but that's okay. So I have a question from Eric in New Hampshire. I seem to be having to add dichlor every morning to my hot tub due to my test strip showing no chlorine. Ha. Ben kind of talked about this already, but... Um, and then the question goes on to say, how often do I need to add dichlor and what level should chlorine reading be at? So... With the EcoPure filter, when you add chlorine after you use the hot tub or swim spa, just like Ben was saying, the EcoPure filter will actually dissipate any excess chlorine. So if you were to test it, just like we did earlier, it's going to show very limited or zero chlorine in your swim spa. That's what we want. We don't want you to be in the hot tub or swim spa with chlorine so that you're not actually soaking in chemical. So you want it to actually be very limited to zero chlorine on the test strip when you're testing it in the morning, especially if you treated it the night before after you used the hot tub. So definitely don't be adding more chlorine if it's showing zero, if you're, especially if your water's clean and clear. And then when should I use shock before or after it's used? And again, we don't wanna be sitting in or exercising in any chemical so it would be best to use the shock at the after you're using it and maybe once a week put about two tablespoons in just to kind of shock that water and give it a little bit extra filtration so i'll let um ben do a question and then i'll come back later i took her chair <laughs> okay yeah the, the shock you want to run it once a week and um that's it it, it just refreshes the water so the chlorine can do its job you clean the filter every month, at what point do you replace? Um, good question. I have two here. So two we, sets of two filters. Two sets of filters. So Kevin Lee Wright, hello. So we just interchange them and clean them. Um, we've had the two sets. They say the official answer for that is replace them at the year mark. Um, I can tell you this, we're gonna be running the two back and forth and we will not be replacing them at the year, but we have two. So, so theoretically it should last us two years doing it that way. Um, but every year you wanna change those filters. And then on the EcoPure, six to eight months, okay? Uh, shock every day, we use it, and chlorine once a week. Everybody's a little different. I don't, I, I don't run that much shock. Um, I don't believe that's necessary. As you can see from mine, I don't do that. Uh, you're gonna have a lot of opinions, um, and most dealers are really good at this. I'm not a chemist, I'm not the authority on this, I'm just sharing how I do it and some official information. And if it information. works for you and your water is clean and clear, uh, then, then do what you're doing. We have a Challenger 15D, it came with two EcoPure inside and one regular filter. Do we need both Eco, I only run one EcoPure in ours. So you don't need it, because obviously it works for us, uh, but there's nothing wrong with two EcoPures either. So you probably don't need two in there. Um, either way, we run one. Um, I've seen plenty of people run too. Either way, it's going to be fine. If you're doing everything else, that it'll be fine. The eco peers work beautifully, though. Okay. So next, all right. So the main, <laughs> the first question here: How do I keep water maintenance easy? I think my way is the easiest. At least it is for me. So don't let anybody pee in it. Put a little bit of chlorine in there every time someone gets out. Keep the filtration up. That's it. Simple, simple. Um, you can go the other way and be a checkbook balancer and go through everything, test strips, start with alkalinity, then make sure your pH is dialed in, make sure your calcium hardness is where it should be, and then tag your chlorine. You can do that as often as you want. We've got customers who check it daily with test strips, and hey, if that's what they want to do, that's awesome, okay? Um, I don't have time to do that, all right? All right, so uh, let's see. Waiting on my clarity and added UV light. What are your thoughts on it? Was it worth it? Um, clarity with the UV. So the UV light is just an additional filtration and I, I don't run it. Um, people have been doing it this way for 40 years or something. So it works for me. Additional filtration can never be a bad thing. 
So if you want to run extra filtration, it makes this a little bit easier. You use a little bit less chlorine. Awesome, man. All right, entirely up to you. So we've got some people that, you know, like hardcore, want to make sure that water is absolute. I was a Marine, I've been in some horrible water. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, no matter, at its worst, is like the best place I've ever been. So including some triathlons and some oh pretty gosh. frigging yucky water. All right, so this. Full it, wetsuit. Full, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so yeah, knock yourself out. More filtration, always awesome. Okay. All right, how do I change the filters? Ooh, you want to show that now? Oh, uh, we could. So, I'll show that. All right. So I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna swing it around. So the big thing on here is you won't be able to pull the filters out if you don't turn the breaker off. So I'm gonna turn the breaker off. You can see that running right now. I'm gonna reach down there. All right, now it's off. I'm knocking stuff off the wall here. All right, Mayor, yep. hop up and show us. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Okay. So there's two here. I'm just, gonna just take off the big one. one but, uh, so you, you pull the housing yep. right up. You gotta make this look easy, Mayor. There's a little tray inside that you need to pull out. Pull the tray. Should I share the tray trick? Sure. When we're done. Okay. And then I just unscrewed the filter and pull it out. And then, you know, I, we always drain these a little bit out so that we're not walking across the floor with wet filters. But if you're outside, then that doesn't matter. And That's then it. I would use the hose and really rinse out whatever, you know, really want to get inside the paper filter and get out all the gunk that's in there. And then um, there's another filter in here. I would do the same thing and rinse that out and then just place it back in. Now when you thread After it's rinsed, Yep. When you thread the filter back in, there's no reason to tighten it. Just is just spin it and where it stops is fine. If you if you tighten it, you'll have a lot of difficulty getting it out. Okay, that has that has people have had an issue with that before. So we don't run the tray in ours, but there's no children in here. There's nothing floating in there and it's inside. So we, don't, we tend to not run the tray. There you go. There we go. That's it. Very nice. I'm gonna turn the breaker back on and zoom back out. There we go. Hang on. go that'll come back on now there it goes okay there we go all right questions fire them up you got another one sure yeah one uh, one of the questions that we just generally get a lot um, is just how much can we expect to spend on chemicals per year Susan, yes. And we were thinking that it's a maybe at the most $200 a year for the chemicals that you would use. So it's really economical and really easy. So you're not spending a lot of money on, on chemicals throughout the year with your swim spa. Okay. Oh, here we go. The speakers have rust color water that drips from them once in a while. What is the best way to take care of them? Uh, Albert, California. I would use a magic erase and you can take them apart and clean them and just clean them up. That's it. So just use a magic eraser on the line that comes down, just hit it. Uh, we've had that happen where once in a while, someone will see a little line, a little rust color, and just magic erase touches that right up. I get a lot of backwash into my spa. When do I, I get a lot of backwash into spa when I take the filter out, why? I don't, backwash, I don't understand. You mean like things falling out of the filter? How much stuff do you have in there? Like leaves or I'm not, We'll have to we'll have to address well, that you afterwards. May just want, then, if that happens a lot, you may want to rinse out your filters more than once a month. But I mean, you are going to have a little bit of a little debris that kind of falls yeah. off the filter when you're pulling it out. But it'll just get sucked right back in on the next yep. time. I I never give it thought. So uh, let's see. Chemicals. That was Mary's. Is this me? No, yeah, I already did that one. 
<laughs> we got our we got our questions mixed. Um, how do I change filters? What spa chemical? Sh so what spa chemical should I have on hand? Okay, so for me, if you took all this stuff and left the chlorine, I'd be okay doing Ben's <laughs> method, Ben's famous method of water chemistry. Um, now I guess mine works because the water is good here. I guess if you have bad water coming out of the tap, it might not be so easy and you might need to address some of these other things. So this just happens to work for us here um, as another disclaimer. So, uh, but as far as chemicals you should have on hand, you should have alkalinity up. We start with alkalinity. You should have pH up and down. You should have calcium hardness increaser, shock, and either chlorine or bromine. Uh, keep in mind, bromine does not work well with the EcoPure. It was designed around chlorine. That's your main that you should have on hand. Okay. What about that Protect Plus? Just when you refill. That's you when you refill. Water? You're going to use the mineral out. It's not something once the water's full. Okay. You know. Yeah. So and and you have people out there that are really good with their water, and they get a long time out of their water. Yeah. So it's not something, you know, that's too concerning. And if you had, you know, perfect city water, would you even need it at all? Right. So you might not. Okay. Uh, let's see. You want to hit that? Or you want me to hit I'm that? I'm leaving on vacation. How do I adjust the swim spa? So we, we've talked yeah, we about talked this about it, a little bit, but just maybe put a little bit of extra chlorine in before you leave, increase your filter cycles uh, so they're a little bit longer than normal, and then lower your temperature just a bit uh, while you're gone. And then when you come home, just check it and see if it might need some adjustment. But really, you don't really have to be too concerned about it. So let's see. I think what, we already what causes foamy or cloudy water, and how do I avoid it? So what what causes the foamy and cloudy water are a couple of things: either contaminants coming off of people, or your alkalinity and pH or calcium being jacked up. If those are messed up, all the above can start it, can can cause all that. Okay, so you start with if I, if I came in and the water was bad, I would. You know say okay well maybe I need to do this officially like a chemist and start with the alkalinity pH calcium hardness chlorine in a day or two it'll be perfect you know keep in mind there's in this swim spot there's 1895 gallons it's gonna take a, a little bit yeah. and you can always turn the filtration up too okay to remove green tinge in water I should use protect plus please verify yes okay you're getting the copper out of the water I green think that's tint is one copper. of your questions it is yeah it is do we already answer no uh, light green tint, it's right there. Yep. CJ, New Mexico, was that him? No. Maybe they're together, I don't know. So we got that question right there. So use a mineral remover, Protect Plus, one of those to get the green tint out, especially if your, your test strips say that everything else is flawless, it's that, okay? Chlorine, pH, alkalinity are spot on. How do I get rid of the green tint? The same yep. question. Is it copper? Yes. So yeah, that's all set. All right. This one we kind of talked about too. We are snowbirds away from June to December. This is Cindy in Florida. Uh, we are snowbirds and away from June to December. So they come north June to December. We have had two master spas and have considered putting in a swim spa, but not sure how to maintain while we are gone. How do you suggest maintaining or would you suggest not getting one? Um, well, I wouldn't suggest not getting <laughs> one if you want one. That's sort of uh, crazy. That's crazy. If you want one, get one, all right? There's a couple things you can do. I mean, we've got people that drain them. I don't really recommend that, but you could always drain it and do that. Um, or you can just turn the filtration up. Um, one other option you have is the Master Pure. Uh, comes with a 24-hour circulation pump. That's another way you can go. If you know that you're gonna do that every year, you can have the circ pump that gives you continuous 24-hour filtration. That's something that you can do. Um, if you're going away for months, uh, might help you out, okay? But you could, run that kind of filtration anyway um, it will just you know run a, a couple of more amps okay on your your filtration cycles so but I would turn the temperature down turn the filtration up maybe put in a frogger system that's going to release small amounts of chlorine after a month have someone come and check it add a little more chlorine to the frogger you come back the water will be fine yeah all right it's a piece of cake but I, I definitely don't if you want if you have a hot tub you're a hot tubber if you've had yeah. two you're definitely a hot tubber and if you're looking to go swim spa and you're looking to add you know aquatic exercise there's nothing better why in the world would you not get one okay so I mean obviously we're gonna say get one get one get one but 
we can't take it with us, so do what makes you happy, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. There's no, what, what else is there? Let's be happy, let's have some fun, let's get the family in there, let's have a good time. Especially right now with all this nonsense going on, everyone's looking to, to make home a, a little bit more fun. Uh, do I have to turn off the breaker when I clean the filters on a hot tub? Uh, you don't have to, but it's a heck of a lot easier because if it's running a filtration cycle and it's pulling through that filter and you go to take it off, it's not easy to get out, especially in the swim spot because it fits in that little sleeve. So unless you're real strong, you know, so you can, some people don't on a hot tub, it's a little different because it, it doesn't fit in a sleeve. So depending on what kind of tub you have. It's so not you, going to hurt yeah. you or the swim spot to not turn the I mean, I will tell you this, don't put your fingers or right. hand anywhere near it because it's pulling down some suction. The official answer is to turn it off. If the breaker's right there where it should be, flip the yeah. breaker off and then take it out. Why not? You know what I mean? It's, if you've ever put your hand anywhere near yeah, uh, when you take the filter suction. out, it's a lot of suction, more than people think. I mean, at the first time I, I, re I remember it was on a circ pump tub and I had my hand near it and I, I whoa, I, wow, it, it was really pulling. Yeah. So yeah, you know what? I'm going to go with turn it off. So this is the official answer. If you're a spa tech and you say, hey, I'm gonna do this on the fly and you really know what you're doing, that's a different story. But for, for most of us, yeah, let's turn it off. Why not? Let's be safe. It's a, it's a two second step that's gonna make it, make it carefree Easier, and, yeah. and let's do that. Uh, da, 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 da. My spa has a hold setting that lasts for one hour to clean filters. Perfect, yeah, whatever. It's the same thing. You're just making sure that it's pulling, it's shutting down all suction that's really what it's at. It's not an electrical concern. It's it's the suction on there. You just want to make sure that's off. If you've got a hold setting, fantastic. You know, um, this probably does. I don't. Yeah. Ever, I don't ever. I never never looked. The break is right there. I just flick it off and, and do it. All right. So I think that's I it. I think that's it. I think that's yeah. it. Yeah. What else do we got on there? <laughs> yep. And we will we will be on there tonight as we yep. always are, and we'll be answering questions. Um, this one is. It's kind of it's a less exciting topic than like the amazing. But we view will last make up time. for it on our next Facebook live. Is it the next one or the next next one? Well, I don't actually. I don't know. Actually. What did you? What have you done? Spoiler I didn't do alert. anything, but I don't know actually because it in two weeks, it's. Oh, it might be off. Right, it's the Wednesday before. That. Let's just tease them and not tell them anything. Okay, never mind. So there's gonna be an amazing live coming up? So we're actually not sure if our next Facebook Live is gonna be in two Wednesdays. So or maybe it'll be more, I don't know yet. Right, we will so, keep you posted. You know, everyone, everyone thinks that, that, that I slash we can just do and say whatever we want. It's actually not true. We really can. We, we can? Did can't. You say, can't. <laughs> Kevin is sitting there like. Uh. <laughs> All right, so when filling the swim spa for the first time, should both filters be removed? Um, yeah, you definitely want to put the hose down. So the reason, um, I'll answer that real quick. The reason you put the hose down in the, 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 the filter hole, for lack of a, sorry, it's not the official word, but in that, in that you know, the pipe that, where the filter screws into, you put the, the water, the hose in there because it fills all that plumbing and the pumps on the bottom and you have, you're less likely to airlock. And it does, it has top secret stuff coming up. It is top <laughs> secret. secret. We've got some really neat stuff coming up. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not quite back to normal. I can tell you this, when all this nonsense pandemic stuff is over, life is gonna be back to normal fun. We, we had so much really exciting stuff planned for this year and we're gonna get back and, and believe me, as soon as we're okay to do it all. But we've got some fun we'll ones on coming up. This so. next one is gonna yeah. be awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be special. All right, so yes, so put the hose in there, it stops the airlock. Um, I've done it both ways. I put it in there when I think about it. When I don't think about it, I fill it up. I'm also not afraid to loosen up the union and fix an airlock. Okay? Are we done? Second. She's still trying to figure I'm out the still, schedule. Uh, the next forget one. it. We'll let you know right. when we're going to be having our next one. Right. Keep an eye out. Cool under bottom of your steps. I don't know what they're doing. We'll answer about. these questions we'll after. We'll answer later. Yes, All right. You guys are the best. We've been on long enough. You're the best. Thank Added you. To, uh, we'll get there later. All right. We can <laughs> <laughs> have a good night. Good night, everybody. Doesn't want